Greetings, 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 beautiful people. How are you this evening? Come on in, come on in. How are you? How are you? How are you? So let's get started. Yes. Today we are in the Stuff the Wealthy Do series and I'm excited to talk about today's installment because it actually makes a big difference. It is a key characteristic of the wealthy and not just for their money, but for most of the things in their life. Now, who am I? I'm Dr. Dominique. I am the owner of Reese Consulting Group, LLC, also known as Reese Financial Services, where I'm the chief financial coach, consultant, and strategist. And I am excited to present this topic because studies show that not enough of us, Black women in particular, are out here hiring professionals. And so that's what we need to do. We need to hire financial professionals to help us, one, become better money managers. Uh, statistics show in this latest statistic or study rather that came out in 2020 it was the black investor survey done by Ariel capital management and Schwab they partnered on this uh, that 20 percent of black women who were surveyed have a financial advisor 20 percent that's like so what does that really mean <laughs> that really means out of 10 black women two have a financial advisor the other eight assuming are, are doing it themselves diy so doing it yourself versus hiring someone i mean the benefits seem obvious but if you've never done that before if you've never seen that before right how do you know to do it? How do you know the benefits? So again, when we are creating what we've never seen, you're the pioneer financially. You're the wealth pioneer, right? You're creating it for the, for the first time. You've never seen it. You've never experienced it. You've never seen anybody work with a financial professional outside of a tax person, outside of an insurance person. So you may not know to do it. You may not know when to do it. You may not know who to do it with. So that's what we're going to cover today. We are going to cover why hire, who to hire, the mindset of hiring versus this superwoman syndrome, I like to call it. And then credentials or not, like who should I be out here looking for, right? So let's start with why hire. What are the benefits of hiring a financial professional? Well, one, you've got someone who's smarter than you right? You are doing the job you get paid to do all day, five days a week, weekends, possibly. Whereas this financial professional, this is what they do all day, five days a week, weekends, possibly, right? We've got to start thinking about our expertise. We've got to start thinking about the skills that we command and the skills that we don't command. Fairly simple. You are not good at everything. And the things that you are not good at tend to be neglected, get left out, um, maybe not get the results that you like. You may do them, but you may not like doing them. So there's some drudgery that you bring to the exercise. Whereas there's someone who does this for a living, stays on, stays up on the latest, right? Knows the trends, knows the strategies, may be working, getting paid to do this, may have studied in school. So have dedicated time and really energy and thought capital and may have been doing it for a while. So you've got time, experience rather, you've got studied like vocational training, and then you've got the work experience. Your financial professional can have a combination of all three of those things, like myself. And then personal experience, right? You, I know for a fact that the things I've been through financially have helped my clients because I've been there. 
I've done that. Not only does it help me relate to them, I am no better than you. I am simply gifted with an ability to make complex topics simple. I am gifted with an ability to work one-on-one with people and it be impactful to them. I am gifted with an ability to manage lots of concepts, to learn concepts in various areas of finances. So I don't necessarily just know one thing. I know a plethora of things and may be very good at a subset of those things, okay? Whereas you as the consumer, as the individual, you know how to do what you do well, which is how you show up every day, right? And then you have to go manage your money. Whereas the financial professional They are managing money. They are managing financial education. They are managing financial behavior. They do this all day. So right there, you can see who has the advantage at possibly getting the better result. Now, this doesn't doesn't go against what we know, which is that there are plenty of people who can manage their own money and do it very well. They too are gifted. And they may not themselves be financial professionals, but that's their gift. That's their talent or that's their skill that they're really good at. It could be one of those things. Many of us aren't blessed with that. And then if you want to be, because it's all teachable, you can be. You have to then put the effort in to become better at it. But if you're not going to do that, Cut your losses, right? Go hire someone. That's the way of the wealthy. They hire professionals. They don't do anything except for the thing they do well, which frees them up from doing other things. And then when they focus and go in, right? When you are finding your purpose and your purpose is tied to your income, then you can live in your purpose, make the money, And hire people to create the lifestyle you desire, right? So that's the goal. If you want to do the stuff the wealthy do, you've got to hire a professional for all the reasons I just shared, okay? So then who do you hire? And again, remember that. The the study showed that out of 10 black women, only two were working with the financial advisor, which brings me to, well, what is a financial advisor? And are they the only ones you can work with? No, they are not. A financial advisor is a professional who assumes a fiduciary responsibility to the clients they serve. They are typically licensed with Series 7, 6, 66 different licenses. They may also have credentials such as a CFP or a Chartered Financial Analyst or a SEMA or a retirement uh, designation. There are very, uh, there are various designations that one can have. Ideally, they are licensed, which means they are governed by the SEC and FINRA. They have a responsibility to the clients they serve because they're managing money. And they tend to get paid based on the amount of money they're managing. We call that assets under management. So a financial advisor meets you and they learn about you and they say, okay, well, how much money do you have put away? And you say uh, (laughs) $5,000. They say, okay, well, come back when you have $245,000 more. Right. (laughs) That's a financial advisor. Financial advisors get paid based on the amount of money you bring to them because that's what they're going to manage. So let's take that example where you bring a financial advisor 250000 And let me be very clear, not all financial advisors require that minimum. But here's why the minimums are so high. Here's why typically you would have to bring $250,000 in what we call investable assets, meaning this is money to invest. This is not like your living money. This is money set aside just for the purposes of investing. 
Advisors, financial advisors get paid typically industry standard is 1% of what they manage. So if I bring you 250000 I am only going to make $2,500 for the year off of managing that account. 250000 10% of that would be 25000 1% of that would be 2500 Follow me? So they only make money when they manage a lot of money. Therefore, it behooves them to work with people who have money. So here you are with your 5000 and you bring your 5000 Guess how much they're going to get paid? Guess. Can anybody put it in the chat somewhere? <laughs> 1% of that 5000 Let's not get anybody. Well, let's do the math. 5,000, right? 10% of that is going to be 500. 1% One, 1 of that, 50 bucks. So you bring 5,000, they're only going to get paid $50. Doesn't work that way. So financial advisors may not be the best professional for you because you simply may not be ready. You may not have enough money to work with the financial advisor, which then means what? You got to go a level down. So who would that be? Possibly a financial planner because the financial planner can take a look at that 5,000 and say, okay, well, here's a plan. They will produce a written plan based on gathering your information they may have a, a CFP designation, Certified Financial Planner, which means they studied and studied and took some tests and passed the test. That's really all that means. <laughs> I am literally in school for my CFP right now. And it's just school. It doesn't necessarily mean that you've even worked with anyone. You can come out of, you could get hired as an advisor, never work with the client, go sit for the CFP, pass it, and now you have the designation. Now, there are some other requirements, like you got to have hours, right? So there is that piece. But even still, the other parts of it, it's a test. And that's not to um, demote or denounce the, the designation. It's simply, that's what it is. Designations is just means you set for a test and you passed it. It doesn't necessarily mean you're good as a professional. Nevertheless, a financial planner could possibly take a look at your financial life at whole, this $5,000 that you've got saved, and then spit out a plan for you to grow that money. Well, here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to do. If this is important to you, consider this. All of the considerations, they may not implement it for you. You can simply pay a financial planner just for the plan. You get the plan and then you go on your merry way. It's up to you to implement that plan. And again, if they do implement the plan, now they may put you on a retainer, depending on how they have their business set up or if they're with a firm, or they may have a monthly fee. Again, they're independent, some of them, if they're not attached to a firm, but for the most part, they operate the same way as an advisor. If they are going to manage your money, they're going to get paid a certain percentage of that money. And again, they would be licensed to do that so that they can place trades and invest the money for you. So you got to be licensed to do that. I was once licensed at a point because I was a financial advisor working at Merrill Lynch. So that was my job. And to go out and find the clients was my job as well. So that's a planner. But let's say you're like, that's still, I'm not ready for that. I've got debt. <laughs> I've got 5000 saved. My credit is not where I need it to be. You know, I'm making a certain amount, but I want to make more. So there's growth for my income. Planners, financial planners also tend to focus on college planning, estate planning, investment planning, tax planning, and retirement planning. Five key areas that they tend to focus on. So if you don't have any retirement savings, not much they could do for you, but tell you to start saving, right? If you don't have a 
ta complicated tax situation or you know you're you're not tax planning because you don't necessarily have the needs not much strategy there estate planning they could possibly help you with protecting some of the things that you are building your assets um what else college planning if you don't have any children and you don't plan on going to school then what's you know what value would they add there so again if if you're like well that's yeah that i don't check those boxes off yet or that just doesn't apply to my situation now who do you work with gotta go down the level <laughs> gotta go to where someone can meet you where you are that would then be someone like me a financial coach now i have been in all of those roles i've been an advisor I am no longer licensed. I no longer manage money. Not my thing. Not ready to do that again. I've been a planner and depending upon who's sitting across the other side of the table, I have created financial plans for clients. Now in the role that I'm in, I am a financial coach and consultant. I build strategy and I help my clients with the things that prepare them to have assets. So now we're talking mindset, budget, savings, debt, credit, income, protection, and a financial action plan. Now, if you're like, oh, okay, that's where I live. I, I need support with those things. That's where a financial coach can be helpful because they're helping you with basics to get your foundation in order and solid. So now you can begin to build the assets. Well, what does that really mean? That means start saving, pay down your debt, get your credit in order, develop streams of income so you can increase your income, ideally passive income. Make sure your mindset is aligned with what you're doing so you stay motivated and you have healthy habits that you're developing. And then make sure that you are... Um, have a written guide that you're following that's your action plan now you have something to be accountable to okay and and as a financial coach you know a lot of us are independents some of us work at nonprofits, and there's many coaches in the military so if you're a part of the military community you should be able to find a financial coach that you do not have to pay for it is provided as part of your military service so if you that that's not the case then you would seek out a financial coach. Now, it could be a credentialed coach. I have two credentials, the AFC and the FFC, accredited financial counselor, financial fitness coach. There are others. There are others. So that'll be your research. But all coaches aren't credentialed, and it doesn't mean that they're not good. It just means they didn't sit for a test. So that's where you may want to look at their testimonials. You may want to ask what type of clients do they tend to work with? What are their specialties? And then you can interview them just like you would interview any of the other professionals that you may need. Okay. So as a financial coach, that person may be able to meet you where you are, help you get your basics in order, help you begin to build your foundation, and then help you begin to create the assets, build those assets, and then you can start growing the assets. And eventually you would graduate to either a financial planner or a financial advisor. That's the pathway, okay? So when you work with a, a professional, that is what you want to have in mind. Who can meet me where I am, help me get this in order, and then position me to graduate to the next level. That It's that simple, it really is. And if you start getting your mind ready to say, okay, I need to hire someone. Why? Because I've gotten myself as far as I can take myself, right? I don't have the time. I'm not spending the time. I'm not managing my money properly. I'm not, you know, taking a look at it regularly. I'm not working on everything at the same time. Huh. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. That's why you hire someone. So that's a perfect segue into the mindset of delegation. This is an area of your life that you can delegate, but you're already used to delegating. This is just an area you're not used to delegating because you may not have seen it. You may not have experienced it. Who else do you know has hired 
a financial coach, a financial planner, a financial advisor. If you don't know 10 people, out of 10 people, you don't know anyone rather, then now you're becoming that person. You're becoming the person in your immediate network who is doing better with their money, who's breaking the generational curses, as we say, in order to build the generational wealth, right? It's trendy to say it, but what are we actually doing to build the generational wealth? It's one thing to get money. A lot of us are getting money. Kudos to us. But once we get it, what are we doing with it? Remember, be, do, have. What are you doing with it? You want to be wealthy? Do what the wealthy do. They hire a professional. So you got to get your mind ready to do that. Because our mindsets typically have been trained around doing it, doing everything on our own, especially black women especially black women. I mean, from the days of slavery, right? We were literally beaten and conditioned to think that we don't need the man and, and emasculating our men in front of us and then taking him out, out of our homes. And then we really did have to do everything. And that is a tradition in our history, right? So when you think about that, you're always doing everything on your own toughen it out, our language, right? I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to just do what I have to do. Let's cut that. Let's, let's cut that. <laughs> let's sever that, really. Some bonds can't be broken. They have to be torn. That's one of them. When it comes to our money and how we show up in that relationship with our money, we are so used to doing it on our own. We don't trust others. We don't trust people. And so that's part of the mindset shift. And you have every right to not trust because we have been taken advantage of. And it's also our responsibility, especially now, to start seeking out those who do have integrity, who are professional, who do what they say they do and can take you from A to B, B to C, C to D, all the way to point Z because we're out here and there are a lot of us that have integrity and that operate properly and with ethic. We have a good work ethic and that's the professional you want to seek out after you've begun to shift to a delegator versus the superwoman, <laughs> right? Not trying to do it all. I want to hire someone. Now I'm going to have paid accountability. I'm going to have regular meetings about my money. I'm going to have someone who's smarter than me, but can educate me, not but, and can educate me, and then take me on the journey I want to go on. Because it's your journey. They're going to take you where you say you want to go. So they're going to help you set the goals. What do you want to do? with? Why do you want more money? What are you working for? What what do you have in your mind? What's your vision? How do you want to live? How do you want to show up in 10 years? How do you want to show up in 20 years? Okay, if that's what you want to do, let's back out of that. What is that going to require? Okay, well, let's get these basics in order so that we could start building on that strategy. Simple enough. But when you don't have time, when you're too tired, when you already have stuff to do on this day, that day, this day, and the weekend, when are you taking dedicated time to manage your money? If you're not, now it's time to start thinking, who can? Who can I delegate this responsibility to so that essentially I'm becoming a better manager and I just have to manage the system that I have in place. And the system that I have in place is Dr. Dominique. And she helps me to get things in order keep things in order and grow what I'm getting in order. And we meet regularly and I've set goals and I'm accountable to her and she's going to check in, right? That's what that relationship begins to look like. So now you don't necessarily have to budget because the technology I use will do the budget for you. And it's on an app that you can tap in, right? <laughs> and, and see what's going on as well. And then when we do have our monthly meetings, 
we meet and you tell me everything that's going on and everything that's coming up and what you want to do and oh this came up and how does that impact what I got going and well I want to think about this and yeah I'm planning that birthday party and you know my kid or my mom or I got to do this or we talk about all of that we account for all of that and then it's just strategy implement the strategy okay so we've covered it we've covered it hire a professional it is what the wealthy do and if we want to be wealthy remember be do have if we want to be wealthy then we need to do what the wealthy do so we can have what the wealthy have which essentially for this topic is be wealthy be a better manager of our money how do we do that we hire a financial professional who can meet us where we are in our financial journey. And what will we have? Well, we will have ideally accountability. We will have goals in place. We will have financial order. We will have, because I don't want to forget anything, <laughs> um, accountability. And then ideally, the regular money meetings and more money. More money. That is the goal because the goals that we have require the money. So as your money comes in, the manager that you hire is going to help ensure that the money is going towards those goals. Pay down debt, increase savings, get ready for a down payment on a home, go buy a new wardrobe, prepare for vacation, get my kid off to college properly, save for a new vehicle, whatever, whatever, right? But now you see your money working in those areas. It's going where you're telling it to go. You're giving your money orders, financial order, everything in divine order. Okay. So we are right up at the 30 minute mark. What can you do today? You've got this. You're fired up. You're ready to go. Go ahead. Go ahead and schedule some time with me. Schedule some time with me. It's a great opportunity to have a conversation. It's the top of the year. Let's see what we can do for you. Let's see how we can make this happen. No, we are not taught this in school, Erica. You're absolutely right. But I will say it's happening down in Florida. Florida just enacted a law where they've got to teach financial education. They say financial literacy, financial education in high schools. So it's happening. It's happening on that level. But for those of us who are out of school, adults in this real world, yes, you've now got to hire a financial professional so we can get you to the next level in your financial life. All right. I am so grateful for you, thankful for you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. And stay tuned for the next installment of Stuff the Wealthy Do. Dr. Dominique signing off. Peace.